Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm Zach Peterson. I'm a technical consultant with Altium. And today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about silkscreen on your PCB. Silkscreen is actually something that's really important, typically overlooked, and you generally need to do a little bit of cleanup on your silkscreen once your board layout is finished. So silkscreen is really important, not just for you as the designer to see where everything sits, it's important for assemblers, and it's even important for you when you're testing a prototype or just testing a board in general. All right, that's what we're gonna go over today. Let's get into it. What exactly is silkscreen? Silkscreen is printed on the surface of your PCB and it's used to contain some important information. So if you've looked at a professionally designed PCB, you see all those letters and numbers on it, you see the outlines for components, maybe a part number, that's silkscreen, generally printed in white on the surface of the, surface of the circuit board on top of solder mask. So what information is on a silkscreen? There's actually a lot of different information, but the most common piece of information you'll find in silkscreen is the reference designators for each component. So each component has a reference designator. That reference designator is an alphanumeric code. That alphanumeric code tells you that this component on the PCB layout is matched to a specific component in the bill of materials. And it also matches to the same component in the schematics and your, your PCB layout document in your CAD tools. Every PCB design software application uses reference designators to denote which components are which components. The other piece of information that, uh, or the other pieces of information that Silkscreen can contain include anything from part numbers to component outlines, polarity indicators, Polarity indicators are really important for some components, so like diodes or polarized capacitors. It can contain polarity indicators for power connections, uh, lot numbers if you're a manufacturer, company logos. There are also some other logos that are important to indicate, uh, to indicate like environmental and uh, radio emissions, uh, regulatory compliance. And we'll get into all of those when we look at an example in a real PCB layout. When you create your components, your components will have to actually have some silk screen. And in your design software, if you use the right design software, you won't have to manually create that once you put your components into the board. Your components will actually contain that information when you put them onto the board and it'll automatically be populated in your PCB layout. The most uh, important piece of information in your components are your reference designators and sometimes just labeled ref des. The reference designators are an alphanumeric code. The letter in the alphanumeric code specifies what type of component you're working with and then the number is just the number of that component and they're just ordered in sequence. I'll just list some of the common reference designators here, some of the most common that are used in the industry. Just make sure that you uh, follow these conventions because if you ever pick up a circuit board and it uses an odd set of reference designators, it might not be so obvious what those components are supposed to be. I'll just go through some of the common ones. So the first probably the most common one is R, and this is for a resistor. So again, R is for resistors. C is for your capacitors. L is for inductors. And these are the most common for different uh, passives. Uh, D is gonna be for diodes. And there are a number of others. Uh, J is for connectors. Some of the others, uh, Q, Q is for transistors. And there's actually a big long list of reference designators that uh, apply to any number of components. Um, again, these are probably the most common that you'll deal with just for simple components that you put into a PCB layout. The next important reference designator that is uh, a little special and not so intuitive is U. So U is used for integrated circuits. Generally, you wanna start with U1 as like your main microcontroller or your main microprocessor. Whatever the main host controller is for the design, you'll wanna use as U1. Then other integrated circuits that are gonna appear in the design will appear in succession. So U1, U2, and so on and so forth. Again, as you place these in your schematics, uh, your design software should automatically update whether it's U1 or U2 or U3 and so on and so forth as you place more components into the design. So design software like Circuit Maker and Altium Designer will do this for you. Technically, you don't have to start at U1 or R1 or C1 or whatever. 
You can start with whatever number you want as you put components into your schematics. Typically, PCB design software, at least the high quality ones, will automatically place, if you put R1 in the schematic, they'll also put it in the PCB layout. And they do that by creating a link through your components. So when you're creating your components, you'll need to create silk screen. And the silk screen is where you define the reference designator and you'll put U1 or U2 or whatever you need to put. You don't even need to put the specific number when you create your components. You can just put U or R or whatever the type of component is that you want it to be. Then it will automatically appear in your PCB layout once you transfer all of your component data from your schematics into your new layout. So we'll actually do a uh, component creation demo in an upcoming video that shows how to place silkscreen into your components. And that's gonna do a lot of the work for you by putting the silk screen in the components. The last thing you wanna do when you're building a big design is have to import hundreds of components into a PCB layout and then manually create all of that silk screen for those components. Then if you reuse those components in another PCB layout, you would have to manually recreate the silk screen again. So if you put the silk screen in the components, then it will automatically populate in your PCB layout and you've done a lot of the work, it's done a lot of the work for you. So one thing that happens in a really dense design is that sometimes the reference designators can overlap each other or the reference designators can overlap component outlines. Um, sometimes it can get all bunched up and it'll be really difficult to read everything if the, you actually just send that board off for fabrication and assembly. So to see why that's really important, we can actually look at a example and that example I'm gonna show here in just a moment will show what are, what are some good practices for cleaning up that silk screen? That way you can leave room for other important information like uh, you know, serial numbers, part numbers, company logos, any other information you need to include, include in your silk screen. Okay, so what I wanna look at here in these two layouts are uh, some things that can happen when you have really dense boards and uh, the silk screen starts to to run into itself and you actually have overlapping silk screen from different components. Um, hopefully this will show some different ways that you can actually clean up the silk screen and how silk screen uh, and reference designators on the silk screen get arranged so that you can actually tell which components are which on the assembled board. So um, here on the screen, I'm actually looking at a BGA component that's on a board. Uh, this BGA uh, on the top layer, if you just uh, go to the top overlay, uh, has a lot of different reference designators for some of the surrounding components. So I'm in Altium Designer right now, and inside Altium Designer I can turn on single layer mode. So here I'm on the top overlay. So previously I was on this top layer, and you can see all the copper for this, uh, for this BGA. Now here I'm on the top overlay, and on this top overlay you can see uh, quite a number of components here. Um, these T's are all for test points, so T21, T22, etc. Um, those are all for test points on the board. Um, now, if I go to the bottom overlay, on the bottom side, there's a whole bunch of passives, and you can see all of these reference designators scattered around the back side of the BGA. So if I look in 3D, and then I flip this over to the other side, uh, here, you can start to see where some problems might arise. And so if we were to just import all of the components into the board as they would normally appear by default, you would definitely have a lot of this silk screen overlapping. It's, it's unavoidable. This silk screen, uh, the, the reference designators in the silk screen layer are going to overlap. So um, you need to take some time to make sure that you can move some of this around and so that it's that's very, uh, all gonna be easy to read. So uh, here you can see, you know, when they're all lined up in a line like this, uh, you can just arrange the, the silk screen uh, kind of on top of each other. Um, once you get into a situation like this where you have them arranged kind of in this L shape, you might need to get a little more creative with how you arrange the reference designators on the silk screen layer. So here you can see like C161, C183, C175. These are all rotated at 45 degrees. And this way uh, they can kind of fit into this little area without uh, overlapping each other. Um, C184 right here is actually this component uh, that I've just clicked on, uh, this component, oh, it's selecting a different component. That's okay though. Um, it's this uh, capacitor right here. There we go, there it's selected. 
Um, so it's a 0402 capacitor. So these are all 0402, so they're pretty small capacitors. Another thing that you can do, and it's actually pretty common, is to offset some of these uh, some of these reference designators when you have a dense arrangement of components, and then put them in their own little box. And so when they're in their own little box, and then you've got a line drawn over to that component area, the idea here is to arrange you know, reference designator number one, reference designator number two, so that they're in the same orientation and in the same order as the actual components that appear on the board. And so you can see this is done right here with C186 and C168, and it's these two capacitors right here. Um, I've got another example that I'll show. So let me just click over to this other one. Uh, so if I go over to the bottom overlay layer, turn on single layer mode, you can see it's uh, pretty packed back here. Um, let me go into 3D. Oh, here we go, I was already on the back layer. So here's another great example of how you can actually use these boxes with reference designators to, to indicate specific groups of components. And so this layout is actually pretty complex with all of these capacitors packed on the back side of the board like this. Um, all of these capacitors and you know the small number of resistors that are there, all of those reference designators have to be very clear. So that way, if you have to go in and test or you have to go in and, and do some rework or whatever the case may be, you can actually identify and say, you know, this specific resistor is this specific reference designator. Um, so here, uh, this box right here where I'm zooming in, this is a really good example of how you can arrange the reference designators in the same manner that you've arranged the actual components and then this outline is drawn directly in the overlay layer just to show that it corresponds to this group of passives. So here you can see C4, that's this capacitor right here. Right above it, R15, that's this resistor right here, and so on and so forth as we just look through this arrangement. So C88 is gonna be right here, C120 is right here. Now, what about this guy? Well, we didn't include it in this box, but if you look right next to this guy, you'll see a small line drawn over to C127. So sometimes when things get really packed like that, you do need to get a little bit creative with where you put those designators in the silkscreen layer. And then there's gonna be those other features that you have to draw in order to indicate that this group of components corresponds to this group of reference designators. And you'll need to just select the reference designator and move it around and eventually you'll be able to place them all in the same overlay layer so that it's reasonably clear which components correspond to which reference designators. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching this video. And hopefully this gives you some uh, strategies for cleaning up silk screen in your layout, especially when you have a really dense layout with a lot of components. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to call your fabricator.